hi and welcome to my channel. I'm here with my cup of tea in my lounge again and this time I'm going to talk to you about how I get my medium format and the large format 5x4 negatives into digital files. And from sheets like this we get them onto the computer and uh, able to edit them in Photoshop and Lightroom and, and um, all the usual suspects. I'm not solely an analogue photographer. Um, I started my career as an analogue photographer, obviously a film photographer. Um, but um, I made a move um, years ago now into digital um, for my job. And I kind of think that both approaches, analog and digital, have really, really good things to commend them. I mean, to start with, um, a great thing to recommend analog photography, negatives, is that you have something tangible in your hand to keep. And when a hard drive goes down, which has happened to me, and you lose thousands of negatives, well, thousands of digital negatives, um, that really makes you think about the permanence of a bunch of electrons on a hard drive. Um, likewise, when you scratch that important negative, um, you know, and you there with an enlarger, and you know, you have to spot a print and whatever, then you start thinking, "Whoa, I wish this was a digital file, and I could just go into Photoshop and correct it." So, there are fantastic things to be said for both approaches um, and I, as I say I tend to use a hybrid now a lot, a lot of people scan negatives using flatbed scanners I've got to admit to uh, an almost illogical hatred of flatbed scanners they kind of sum up to me some 1990s Windows 97 beige box grumbly mechanical scanner thing which is just horrible um, and I know the top of the line Epson scanners for example are fabulous absolutely great and the Canon ones and uh, yeah but they cost about the same as a DSLR body um, and I already have a couple of mirrorless cameras in the Sony and, and the Panasonic. So my approach was based more on scanning with a camera. And what I'm going to take you through is my workflow. I'm going to show you right from uh, scanning the negative and uh, interpolating it in that's a lovely word, isn't it? I'm here on a Sunday morning and it's raining outside and I said interpolating. Yes! Yeah. Uh, interpolating the file and, and you know, turning it into a masterpiece. Anyway, let's get started. Here we go to my spare room and the setup I've got with a copy stand with my Lumix GH2, some extension tubes, uh, a Olympus adapter and a 50mm Suico standard lens. The strange thing that you see stuck on the end of that standard lens is a really extended form of lens hood um, which I made out of some um, cardboard packaging tube and various bits I cut out um, at my place of work which I'll show you in a minute um, because one of the chief problems I've had uh, are reflections on the surface of the negative when I'm photographing it and the extended hood just takes all of that out they're really easy to make and you can improvise something really quickly well you can also see there is a negative carrier which I made myself. I had a Lomo one for 120 which wasn't very successful it caused the film to warp so um, 
I've made this and I scan in six sections, uh, or nine sections actually, I think, on this one. Well, here we are in Photoshop, and we're just going to go on to Automate, uh, which will then take us on to Photo Merge, and we'll go on to Photo Merge Auto, and then find the files that we've taken. Six files, I was wrong when I said nine. And we're going to import those in. And then we're going to let Photo Merge do its stuff. You can do auto or you can do collage. Um, it'll work on either. I had it set on auto then. And it'll move around and assemble the uh, parts until you come up with the whole image, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you can see it working away then. There's quite a powerful computer at work here. Um, I've got uh, 48 gigabytes of RAM and uh, quite a lot of cord processors, about six or eight or something like that. Um, but it gets there whatever size of computer you've got. Now I'm going to flatten the image, which gets rid of all the sections. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Curves and I'm going to select a white point and make it the edge of the negative, uh, which will be black when I reverse the negative, which I'm going to do in a moment. Um, we're going to go into invert. And what I'll eventually do now is to desaturate that image so that we take any color elements out of it. And also you can see where I'm waving around my cursor that um, there's some hairs that need to be attended to. And then I'm going to import that into Lightroom and we'll take it from there. OK, I'm going to cut to the edited image from Lightroom there. I've got rid of all the hairs. I've amended the contrast. I've cropped it in to get rid of any distracting bits, um, which I think is really important. Um, and I've added a bit of a vignette because I quite like adding bits of vignette. Um, cropping, I think, is something that people um, maybe shy away from a bit. I don't, when, especially when I'm using um, 120 roll film. Um, if I can't get close enough, and I couldn't really get quite close enough on this image, I'm happily um, crop it in because it's a big negative and I'm not worried about that. Well, there you go. It's a fairly complicated process, but um, I only use it on um, what I think are going to be my best negatives. I will just simply um, take a direct photograph of the whole negative and use that like um, a contact sheet almost to, um, to assess the negatives. Um, if you want to have a go at any of this, um, you don't have to use a copy stand. Um, if you've got a tripod that will allow you to tilt the camera at 90 degrees, that's great. If you have a macro lens or extension tubes, any of that will work. Um, a light box is pretty much essential, but um, I've seen people do it with um, a flash unit bounced underneath on a, on a sheet of card. Various um, solutions like that. There's always ways around things. Um, I was lucky I got my copy stand um, and various bits and pieces together in a job lot which um, along with the light box um, and so it wasn't too expensive a, a setup fee but uh, as you can see the results are quite good all of the um, 120 images I've shown you so far in my um, videos have all been scanned in this way um, and as, yeah, I think it works pretty well in general. Um, I've also tried it on 5.4. I, I have to make a, another hood for 5.4 because the, the um, distance changes for um, focusing in on, on the negative. Um, but I think it's quite a good way of, of progressing um, and going forward. Um, it does create some huge great files which um, are actually expanded my storage on the computer to to deal with a um, few points if you're doing it yourself um, 
don't have the camera set to auto exposure, have it set to manual. Um, I tend to use um, about a quarter of a second of f8 um, as a rule for most negatives, and then kind of vary it around that a little bit. Um, focusing is really important. Um, if you've got focus, focus peaking on your camera, uh, use that. On the Lumix, I don't, but I can but I can zoom right into the film grain, and I, I use that. Um, if there's any buckle in the film, um, it's one of the reasons I use um, F8 is so that I can um, use the tiny depth of field I have got to take out any buckle in the film. But um, with the negative carrier I made, um, there's not really very much buckle. Um, what I'm going to try and do is do a complete um, episode on making that um, film carrier. Which has got magnets and all kinds of things, in it. and um, took me a morning. Um, so uh, yeah, there we have it. Um, how I get my negatives into digital files. Um, Thirty-five millimeter. I don't obviously take sections. I just go in and photograph the whole thing, and um, you know, end up with pretty good, you know, fifteen or so uh, megapixel files which uh, are perfectly good. So anyway, um, if you like what you've seen so far, um, hit the like button, and if you want to see more, uh, please do subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.